What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another installment of the TJZ Tech Show. Today's video is going to cover how to retrieve files from a Windows hard drive. Say for example, if your hard drive is corrupted or if the Windows boot partition is corrupted, this will show you a workaround on how to retrieve the files off of there so that you can safely wipe the hard drive and do whatever you want, throw it out or reinstall Windows. So uh, this trick is very useful for those who don't want to um, purchase one of those external hard drive readers. Those make the process a little bit easier, but it's also, it adds complication because you'll have to purchase the right device and then have it shipped, etc. So this is a good workaround for that. It's also important to note that this will not work with hard drives that are wiped or severely damaged. Say for example, you threw your laptop down a stairway, this is probably not going to work for that. If you wiped your hard drive, there is a completely different process for trying to recover those files. It's a lot more in depth and that will actually have to cover in a different video. So we'll just take that off the table for today. And it's also important to note that this will only work if you have functioning PC hardware. So you basically need to be able to boot it up into the BIOS screen. Uh, it doesn't have to boot into Windows, but just as long as it can receive power, you should be good to go. So as far as what you'll need, the only piece of hardware you will need is a USB flash drive, and I'm sure everybody has millions of these lying around. The next thing we'll have to do is download these two files. The first is Rufus, and this is just an application that you double click to run. You don't even need to install it. And this will allow us to create a bootable flash drive. And the next thing you will need is a Linux ISO file. For example, in this case, we'll be using Ubuntu. So both of these links will be in the description below. The first one will be for, for Rufus. You just scroll down to the page and download the latest version. At the time of recording, that is uh, 3.8. And the next link, I'll link to the Linux Ubuntu download. You just go to this page and then download whichever the latest version is up here on top. Just click download. I'm going to skip that because I already have it good and ready to go. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first step is to double click the roughest file. It's very simple, just click yes on the pop-up window. And the first thing that you'll be prompted to do is to select the device, and this will be the flash drive that you have, hopefully already inserted. If it doesn't show up, you may need to close out of the program, insert the flash drive, and then reopen it. The next thing we'll do is select the disk or ISO image, and we'll click select, and we'll see that I have it in the downloads folder. Just double click that. Everything else is good to go. You can leave MBR, BIOS. You can rename the flash drive if you choose. It's not really necessary. FAT32 is perfect with this cluster size. At that point, you're good and ready to go. Just click start. And then basically what it's going to prompt here is for you to download some of the Linux system files. Just click yes, it'll be really simple. And then on this pop-up, we'll do write an ISO image. That's perfectly fine. And then this is your warning that all the data on the hard drive will be wiped. So make sure that you have it backed up. Once you're good to go, just click OK. And this process should take a couple minutes. I'll do a jump cut to when it is complete. All right, looks like we're ready to go. As you'll see, it says ready. And it took about four minutes from my eight gigabyte hard drive. So once you're done with that, just click close. And then you'll want to plug it into the computer that's having problems. And we're going to take it from there. All right, guys, so once you have the flash drive plugged into the device, if it's a laptop, I would also recommend plugging in the charger. What you'll do is start up the computer, and then we're going to try to boot into either the BIOS or the boot device selection menu. And this is different for every computer. For example, this HP, I'll be pressing escape. But if you're on, for example, a Dell, I think it's usually F12 or F2. Other manufacturers use like the delete key or others use the escape key as well. Uh, either way, what I'll do now is start up the computer, uh, press the escape key, and then I will get the option to press F9 to enter the boot device options. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then you'll see that the second option here is the USB hard drive flash drive, and it has the name of the drive. So I'll just go down and select that. And then on the Ubuntu screen, all you have to do is click enter to try Ubuntu without installing. This will just load the operating system. And then you'll start to see the Ubuntu loading menu. Give this a couple seconds. And then bam, just like that, we're up in the Ubuntu operating system. So in order to view your files, what you'll do is on this left side menu here, we'll click on the file manager. Give that a second to load. And then on the left side of this screen, we're going to choose other locations. 
and then it's usually the second option. In this case, you'll see it's OS, but you may see Windows or any other kind of name. It's basically whatever the name of your hard drive was. Just double click on that. And we can see, for example, that this definitely was a Windows installation. You'll see the program files, program files x86. But to view your files, what you'll do is double click on the users tab and then click on the user profile. And then here's where you'll see all your files that are in your desktop. For example, here's the photos that are on this computer and pretty much all the other files that you should need access to. And you can browse anywhere else on the hard drive, granted that these uh, files are not corrupted. So basically, at this point, you're good to go. Just plug in either another USB drive or an external hard drive, and then you could transfer them over to the other external device using the Linux file manager. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if it helped you. And a special thanks to Matt Kohan, aka Kochan, for suggesting this video and supporting the TJZ Tech Show channel. If you guys also have any suggestions for video topics, feel free to drop me a line in the comments or in any of the social media platforms in the description box below. Thanks again, guys. Peace.